Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any questions or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. The easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today, we've been asked to cover the important points of residential attic wiring. Let's get started. Residential attic wiring is straightforward until you start adding equipment other than electrical wiring into that space. Adding electrical equipment or appliances into an attic creates additional steps to the wiring within that space. Let's go to NFPA Direct. We're going to click this, Direct. We're going to go Space, Select Attic. We're going to choose Residential Attic. As you can see, in this spot, we're going to, we have a number one hot spot we're going to look at right here. And this is a piece of equipment that's put in here, and that is an HVAC system. HVAC or furnace system has been installed in the attic. By adding this into the attic, it will require illumination for the area around the furnace, a receptacle outlet for equipment used to service the furnace, uh, smoke and carbon monoxide alarms uh, be added into that space as well. So let's start out and we'll click on hotspot number one. And you will see a couple of different conditions here. We have the air conditioner, if it's a condenser, we have air conditioning uh, service receptacle, it requires it, we'll click on that. And you'll see According to 21063, there must be a receptacle outlet located on the same level and within 25 feet of the unit and accessible. So not in the hallway below the attic access. This receptacle will also require GFCI protection according to 2108E, even though it's in the normally dry attic location and within the dwelling. We'll go back. We're going to click back again. And we're going to cover the smoke alarms or CO detectors. Now, those are typically going to be found under the building code because this is an attic. There may be special requirements around the type, listing, and the location of that alarm. But in most cases where there is a combustion producing appliance, such as a furnace, there is a requirement for a smoke alarm and a carbon monoxide alarm. The next thing we're going to talk about is, again, we'll go to lighting outlets. Lighting outlets are sometimes found near the attic entrance, even when that space is not being used for storage or for installation of equipment. Although when you install equipment or furnace that requires servicing, you will need a point of control for the lighting outlet at the entrance to the attic. But the lighting outlet should be located near the equipment that may require servicing. The light fixture, or luminaire must be rated for the location it is being installed. And you will see here in our code sections, we have 21070C, and it talks about the point of control shall be at each entry that permits access to the attic. And the listing, all luminaires, lamp holders, and retrofits kits shall be listed. And you have 41097, lamp holders shall be constructed and installed or equipped with shades or guards so that combustible materials may not be subject to temperatures excess of 90 degrees Celsius. So having that been said, the light fixture or luminaire may need to be enclosed because of combustible materials. Another consideration is the temperature in the attic will also play a role in the luminaire's conductor insulation, and you will see that in 41052. 
and it has to be suitable for the conditions, current, voltage, and temperature to which the conductor is subjected. So we're going to click back again and we'll look in this picture and you'll see we have um, a light, um, we have a receptacle, and the lighting control, the switch is uh, down here. Uh, so the other thing that needs to be addressed is residential, in this residential application is running NM cable in an attic. It may require a correction in the current carrying capabilities due to attic temperatures. The NM cables, if they are run across the surfaces of the attic joists or trusses, will need protection from physical damage up to a height of six feet if the access hole is without permanently installed stairs or a ladder. In our drawing here, you will see that we have a permanent set of stairs so if these the wiring will run across the face of these or even across over here the face of this it would require protection up to a height of six feet if we have permanent step ladder or step protection or steps in there the protection now needs to extend up to seven feet so as soon as we add permanent stairs or ladder it now requires protection up to seven feet we hope that answered a lot of your questions about residential attic wiring be sure to visit nfpa.org forward slash link and give link a try if you haven't already as you just saw link is truly a window to productivity